Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Advantage Autodesk, and today I want to show you a couple of tips and tricks in regards to using sketching within CAM for Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and dive right in. As you can see from this part, I have a dovetail that I need a machine, and there's a couple ways of doing this. Um, one example is actually using the 2D contour operation. Now just to kind of show you how I have it set up within my vise, I'm going to actually drop down under model, come over here to CAM, and I already have my setup created. Under 2D, come down to 2D Contour. Now the nice thing about this is after I select the tool that I want to use, so we'll go with a dovetail mill that I already have created within my library. Under Geometry, all I have to do is just select the edge that the contour I want that, that tool to follow. Right click and say OK, and it's going to go through and offset it based off the diameter of that tool, put it right down the middle. And now if I simulate this tool path, you're going to see that it's going to cut it and create that dovetail cut for me. So just like that. But the problem is, if we look closely, it actually collides with the, the part itself. And this is the beauty about turning on the stock and seeing the simulation. So what we can do is back in that operation, I'm just gonna right click on the 2D contour, go to edit, and under the geometry tab, you're gonna see something called tangential extension distance. What this does is it gives you an extension on both sides of that contour. So now when we simulate the toolpath, turn on the stock, it's going to start further off, quart half an inch, and then roll out half an inch as well. So now it doesn't collide with the actual part. Another way is we can actually leverage sketches too. So under CAM, I'm going to drop it under model, go back into the modeling environment, and a, a great quick tip is if I actually click on the, the L keyboard, the, uh, the L button, and click on the face that I want the line to be on, it's actually gonna put me into a sketch by default. Instead of me going and turning on a sketch and then activating the line command, it does it automatically. So what I'm gonna do is just draw a line that goes from right past the, the part for that dovetail, and I'm gonna have now this dovetail mill follow or trace along this line. Go and accept it, we'll stop the sketch. And now all we're gonna do is hop back over to model, cam, under 2D, come down to trace. And what we can do is under geometry, since it remembered the last tool I used, which was the dovetail mill, I'm just gonna pick this geometry. So depending on how long this line is, depends on exactly how that how long that tool path is gonna be. Go and say okay, and now it rolls right in. So if I right click on the trace, edit, you can see I still have all the same options. I can even change um, a lot of the, uh, the the pass extensions under linking, lead in, lead out entry points, vertical lead in radius, all those things. And you can now leverage a sketch to do this. So if I do command or control G, that generates all my tool paths for me. And what we'll see is the 2D, op, the 2D contour will come in and roll in and, and leverage off that edge that I select. And the trace operation is going to give me the same result, but leveraging a sketch to do this. Another great example is using sketching when we're doing indexing. And as you can see in this example, we'll zoom right in, is I'm going to adaptive clear this part out. And some of the things you'll see is it will actually collide with the fixed string. So under CAM, I already have my setup, I've already defined my stock, and I'm gonna drop down under 3D Adaptive Clearing. From here, go and pick a tool that I wanna work with. We'll just go with a eighth inch bullnose end mill. And under Geometry, make sure we don't have anything selected. Go through, turn off rest machining. And the thing though is, if you look at the Z orientation, it needs to be faced up. So if you have Fusion 360 Ultimate, you're gonna turn on tool orientation, and now we can orientate the Z direction. If I click on the stem of the arrow and a face that I want to be perpendicular to, it would orientate the Z axis correctly. Just right click, say okay, and it's gonna go through and then adaptive clear that part out. The problem though, as you can see, it collides with the fixture based off of the size of the stock. So what we can do is do a containment boundary but then leverage sketching for that. So back under cam, drop down the model, and using that same tip, we're going to, I'm just gonna turn on a work plane that I created, just an offset work plane. If I click the R keyboard, or the button on the keyboard, and click the plane that I want, it would automatically put me into a sketch, 
and now I'm ready to draw a rectangle. So I can say, let's keep it within this boundary right here for my adaptive clearing. Go and stop the sketch. Model, drop down the camera. Right click on the adaptive clearing, say edit. And come back under geometry for machine boundary, say selection. And say keep within the sketch that I created, as well as keep the full on center. Say OK. And now it's going to adaptive clear, but only machine just within that parameter that I have set up. So the nice thing now, it doesn't collide. And as you can probably tell, is I'm probably going to just machine all this area, then take it out and, and you know, break off and file down that other piece. This gives you a lot more flexibility now in regards to setting containments and machining just specific areas that go through and, and clear out all the material. So hopefully this helped you guys out in using sketching within Cam for Fusion 360. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up. Thanks again for watching.